All right, now we're gonna do this very small crease dent here. Uh, it's not small in the fact that it's a small dent. It's uh, a little bit deep, but it's not a huge crease. It's just one of the small ones you're gonna run into. It's a uh, vertical, meaning it's running up and down. I keep looking at the wrong place. So I hope that looks like I'm looking in your eyes because I can't let it say it. But anyways, uh, so let's take a look at what we got and uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do. Now, don't wedge these open too far. But I'm gonna have to get a tool down there. So that looks a lot smoother when you have two hands to do it, but uh, do it one handed, that's what we got. So here's our camera set up. And there is a dent we're working on. There's one here and one there. We're gonna go for the big one because it's gonna show up better on camera. We're gonna use a whale tail. Something like this. This one's from Dentcraft. This is the purple handle. Um, I believe that's the half inch, three quarter inch, something like that. Uh, and with when you use these, it's actually gonna be behind the brace. You slide it in and then you use a twisting motion. And whenever you're twisting that thing, again, everything's one handed today. it's gonna twist out into the panel. So those points are actually what you'll be working on. Try to be a good boss, let people go home early, end up making yourself look like a fool on camera. Today we're gonna to use a whale tailor three to get this small crease out. Initially, before I made this video, I thought this was probably gonna be out in the open where we could use a normal door tool, but it wasn't. So improvise, adapt, overcome. There's a bunch of jazz I could tell you about working creases, but the one thing that I really need you to remember is to be accurate. Take your time and accuracy. If you start missing to the left or the right of the center of this crease, you are gonna get a locked in center that does not wanna move. It's kind of a pinch effect. So make sure, if you can, that you're hitting dead center in the deepest part of this dent. I gave you a real quick demonstration, but what you're gonna be doing when you're working with a whale tail is using a twisting motion. Now, that's gonna be incredibly difficult for you to get used to, to begin with, but one thing to remember is you always have direct pressure with a whale tail, which eventually will feel really nice. As I've told you before, with a lot of dents, there are different schools of thought. Now, one very popular one with creases is to section them off, maybe an inch at a time. So as you can see, I've started at the very bottom of this dent, and I'm working it up before I'm moving to the top. This is a fine technique, I use it sometimes, I definitely don't use it all the time. But one thing to remember here at the early stages of this dent is that you're not trying to perfect any one part. This is the rough out phase. Now, you've seen me do that with even my much, much bigger dents. I will rough out the dent uh, in an intelligent way before I go back and start fine tuning things. Now, one thing that you might have a hard time when you first start working with whale tails with is that when you're pushing, a lot of times it's gonna roll through the entire tool before you get to your actual pushing point. So what you have to do is you have to visualize in your head where about is the end of that tip gonna be. It's not uh, where you see the light pinching right now, it's where the final push is gonna be because that's where you're gonna get your power and that is something you have to work on to get your accuracy with a whale tip. I've got a great tip that I'll share to simplify that for you in the future, but for now, just watch and try to learn. Here I'm pointing at these little tiny lows that I need to go ahead and try to pick up. Now, a lot of times you'll see wholesale techs leaving dents about like this. Yes, it's much less noticeable, but right now especially, you need to be working on perfecting dents. Not roughing them out, not getting them 90%. Every dent that you do, right now as a new guy, try to make it perfect. It's only going to help you in the future. What you see me using here is a dead on dent tools knockdown. Now, the reason I like this knockdown for this kind of work is it's extremely sharp. So I can be very, very, very accurate and hit tiny little micro highs with it. Now, again, just like I've talked about with knockdowns before, you need to be right on point. This is something that you need to practice before you get to doing dents like this, because if you start missing, you're gonna make your dent worse, you're gonna add texture you don't need, and that's no good. Now, this is gonna be about the best tech tip that I'm ever gonna to give to you married guys. Now, listen up, married guys. I am going to use several different knockdowns over the course of this video. Now, the reason is, is a lot of time, I will just grab whatever freaking knockdown's in my pocket. Here is the tech tip. Don't store your knockdown in your pocket because when your wife comes home and she does your laundry, that shit's gonna be rattling around your washing machine and she is gonna be pissed. This is my second wife. 
She's had to deal with it and she's not happy about it. So if you listen to anything from this video, listen to that. I also used three different whale tails for this repair. This is an ultra thin whale tail and I will explain the hows and whys in a later video. But just know that some whale tails work better in different situations. And a lot of times you're gonna find yourself switching between whale tails in one single repair like I did here. Like I said, there were three different ones used. This one, uh, the ultra thin is really great at preventing uh, what I like to call snail trails. That's long lines of highs when you're jamming these things behind braces. Now, if you've managed to watch this video this long, now something I want you to see, watch how I walk the tip of that tool into the dent. So sometimes I can't see exactly or I can't predict exactly where the end of that tool is going to be. So what I'll do is I'll give it a little bit of pressure, not enough to move metal, and then walk it to those lows. Now you can see this little crease is getting there, but I still have some small highs, some small lows, little things that need cleaned up. And again, in the spirit of doing repairs correctly, don't walk on those. Make sure you stop and you get it right. Uh, there's a much better view. You can see there's still some work that needs to be done. One thing that is perpetually true and that I always see new tech screw up is to get frustrated with themselves. Check it out. So the cleanup process of your dents is going to take every single bit as long as the roughing out stage. So when you feel that this dent is 70% done, don't be surprised when it takes 100% of the time you just put in to make it right. That is perfectly normal, happens to everybody, but it's the kind of thing that if you do is going to separate an okay tech from a really great dent tech. So make sure you do it. This is gonna make the third time I've said the exact same thing in this video, but listen to me and listen good. If you don't do it, I have no sympathy for you. Right now, as a new tech, perfect your dents. I don't care if what your best is right now, I might consider 70%. Well, next dent that you do, make it 70.5%. And then the next one, 71%. You're just gonna get better, better, and better. Now, it doesn't matter if you're gonna be a wholesale tech, a route tech, retail tech, hail tech, it's gonna improve your speed as well. A little background on me, I was trained in a manufacturing environment. I was in a place where they manufactured cars and all of our repairs were inspected through light tunnels. Now, that was a huge pain in the ass at the time, but one thing that it hammered into my head is that everything needs to be perfect. Uh, you had trained inspectors who were looking to send repairs back to you to redo, but that's a building block that I've carried with me and it has really helped every aspect of my dent career. If you can't fix a dime size dent perfect, you can't fix a quarter size dent perfect. If you can't fix a quarter size dent perfect, you can't fix a crease. If you can't fix a crease, don't even try some of the stuff that I do. Seriously, take your time, do it right. I'm about to finish up this repair here and I'm actually gonna move on and do a bonus one of that smaller crease. It's gonna go a lot quicker because I'm not gonna be trying to explain things as I go. On this next smaller, shallower crease, just watch how I work it up and down and up and down and up and down until it comes out great. Now, let me take this time to say, hey, thank you very much for watching these videos. Um, Again, we have PDR 101 coming out, so if you are confused by any of this, don't fear. Uh, it's going to explain everything that you're not seeing, that you're not understanding yet, and it's going to be extremely helpful to you very, very basic beginning techs. This might not have been the most exciting video that you're ever going to watch, but let me tell you this. It was chock full of really great tips that are going to make you a top tech. That's what you should be aspiring to. Don't be like the guy down the street. That guy's always looking for work. Be a top tech who cannot even keep up with the demand. Now, be a deer and make sure that you subscribe to this channel and like this video. That is what keeps me motivated to keep doing these tutorials. Thank you and have a great day.